division in perception seems to go along with Jesus' teaching. It always has and it probably always will. Debate continues in our own time about Christ's identity and many different views of him. You heard different views of Jesus as I read from the Gospel of John and that's not uh, something odd. It's, we need to understand that there are different views of who Jesus is but what's really important here is that we ask who do we believe that Jesus is? Who do you know him to be? For those who want to use science and reason to identify Christ, he may appear like a misguided or delusional person when he says he and the Father are like this. Because sometimes people forget that the only way to really experience God is through faith. Amen? Amen. In fact, Scripture teaches without faith it's impossible to please God. And why would he come and abide if all we do is give forth a spirit of unbelief. Yeah, he definitely inhabits um, the praises and the beliefs of his people. For those who want to use uh, only a spiritual platform to identify Jesus, he may appear as a vaguely defined higher power. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I don't believe he's a higher power. I believe he is the higher power. I don't believe he's just a high power. What do you believe? What do you believe? For those who want to use religion to identify Christ, he may look like a good man, a wise teacher, prophet. For those who want a relationship with Christ, here's how he looks. He is Messiah. He is the Son of God. He's the Savior of the world. He is the Lord of love. And you know it when you enter into a relationship with him, don't you? If you have a relationship with Jesus that meets those things, would you please acknowledge it by saying amen? Amen. There you go. If we desire to know the truth of Jesus, we must look through those eyes of faith. We can't argue people into faith. Anybody here try to argue people into faith? You know, like, you're wrong. This is what you got to do. I, you know, I don't know about you, but when people enter into a relationship with me, if they approach me that way, I'd be like, okay, stand back, because I, I, can't, I can't do this, right? Actually, I've had a few friends that, that do that every now and then. They come across, and, and they're telling me how I need to view things or telling me how I need to think. Well, you can encourage me and you can influence me, but please don't tell me how I have to view Jesus. Amen. Amen? Because, you know, as different as we are, our experiences are different. And those places where Jesus meets us, those places are different, aren't they? I've been a lot of different places than you've been, and I bet you I met Jesus in those places, but likewise, you've been a lot of different places that I haven't been, and I bet you've met Jesus in those places. I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm a listener. People, I say that a lot, but I am a listener. I love to listen to people. I love to listen to their thoughts about God, their identity about who Jesus is. When I sit and talk with you, I'm always going to sit there and go like, I'm looking for you, Jesus. Where are you? That is, that's how it works. I would love to tell you that every time I sit down with you, I give you Jesus in return, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I can find myself going like, ooh, this is what I think. This is what you need to do, just based on my own understanding, right? And every now and then, Jesus will prompt me to go like, you need to tell them that was you, that wasn't me. And I'll have to say to them, and, I, and people, ev probably everybody here has heard me say this, by the way, that wasn't Jesus. I will say it. I will, I will come right out and go like, okay, I just, like I stepped out in front of him there, and I said that, and that wasn't Jesus. Here's Jesus. He's kind. He's loving. 
he will stop at nothing to know you. And that's the truth. Amen. Amen. Yeah, our faith should draw not only us closer to God, but others to recognize that there's something different about us. Jesus says he represents the Father. The Son is the Word of God. Somebody say, the Son is the Word. word. All right. So what I gain from our passage this morning is that we have a tendency to think that God is a certain way. So when we read the word of God, we taint it, don't we? And here's what we do. We give it a human spin. Do you like a human spin? I am so over human spin, I can't tell you. Just watching television will get you over that one. Here's what's necessary when you read the word of God. The Holy Spirit Don't try to read the word of God without the Holy Spirit. Scripture tells us that it is the Spirit who bears witness with our spirit when we have heard the truth. Do you believe it? And have you experienced that? When I say to you, God is love, can you go like, yes? Right? Just wondering. If I say, the heart of Christ is kind, can you say yes and mean it? All right? So if I say, Jesus loves me, if you said, Jesus loves me, would you be able to say yes? Yes, he does. See, it's the spirit that guides us into all truth about God. And what happens a lot of times is people just want to take this heady analytical approach to God, and it is really detrimental. But what is equally detrimental is when people just want to make everything spiritual and nothing really is powerful, and it's scary. The spirit of God will always agree with the word. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. All right. The spirit of God does not contradict the word. So if God's word says, thou shall not kill, thou shall not murder, actually, and we hear this little voice in the head that says, go take out so-and-so, And by the way, people murder others with their mouths half the time. And they don't have a problem with it, but God does. Amen? So I'm sitting back thinking to myself, how do people use that mindset and attribute it to God? It's not God, is it? It Is that the voice of the shepherd? Okay. Okay. What actually happens is people don't know Jesus. They don't know Jesus. Or they would understand that that is not the voice of their shepherd. Jesus is all about being a shepherd of love and kindness, isn't he? How are we supposed to treat one another? They will know you belong and you believe by your what? Amen. Amen. So when other people listen to our conversation, are they hearing the shepherd of love? Or maybe just our pompous attitudes about our Christian standing? I'm trying to be nice today, but actually, I'm serious. You know, All week long, I've been asking the Lord to just show me different ideas and thoughts about him. And it's really interesting how God will bring to pass so many lessons for me, for me, in a given day. When I just simply ask, do you ask for this 
for the shepherd to lead you, to teach you, to guide you, and to show you more about himself. See, I want to know about Jesus. I, I, I don't know about you, but it, I'm, it's never enough. He's the living word, and I want to know the heart of the Father. And I find out the heart of the Father through the Son, because they're like this. And I want to be like this with the Son, so that I can what? Know the Father too, right? Amen. Do you see what I'm saying? Jesus, he's the living word. He descended from glory long ago, and he said so to all the people around him. He tried to tell them who he was and why he came. He came to save the world and to bring eternal life to a dying, a dying family of God. Amen? He came because he loves us, and he wants to make a way for us to find him. Because he's seeking us all the time. So he's told them, and they still didn't believe it. In fact, he said it this way. I've told you, I've told you, but you do not believe. The proof, then, is in the work that I do in the Father's name. In other words, the proof is in the action. Our words are valuable to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they're not enough. If we want to get to know Jesus, pay attention to the persuasive power of his actions. He said, the ones who believe in me will do works that I do. In fact, they'll do even greater works than these, according to John 14. One of our other readings for today was from the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, 36 through 43. When in that passage, there's this woman named Tabitha. Anybody read that passage before? Tabitha, her life was full of good works. She loved God. She loved people. She was fruitful to open up her life. She just gave God every aspect of herself. And she wore herself out doing good. And she died. And Peter was nearby. And the people who knew Tabitha, because she always gave glory to God. She was a female disciple, by the way. Somebody go like, oh, my. (laughs) All these women and widows, and she just, she made clothes for them. She provided for them. She housed them. She loved them entirely her actions proved that she knew Jesus she was full of kindness but she died and all of these people whose lives she touched came to pay her honor and they called for Peter and Peter asked them all to leave and then he prayed over Tabitha, and he called her by name. Now, who do you suppose went in that room? Was it really Peter? Or was it indeed Jesus? Amen? Amen. And he went in, and he's like, my sheep know my voice. And Christ in Peter went in and said, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes, and she rose up, and she lived again. It's a wonderful lesson of God's love. But can I tell you that apart from the Spirit, that's really a picture of us. We maybe have done good things, maybe great good things in God. Amen? But unless we have the life of Christ living in us through his spirit, we can't really press on to do those amazing things that God has for us to do. And Jesus said, I've got even greater things for you to do than what I'm doing. How is that possible? I believe the answer is because 
Jesus can now abide in every human being that will believe. And we'll all be going about doing what? Good and kind things. And all of a sudden, as we go about doing good and kind things, our actions are going to look really different. And they're going to be proving that we serve the risen Lord. I see people do kind things all the time. And I say, ah, I see you, Jesus. Amen? I see you. You are, your heart is kind. Do you know that kindness is a fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. Oh, there it is, right there. Kindness. So what is the definition of kindness for you? This being nice to everybody, just agreeing with everybody? This week, God's shown me about kindness in many different avenues. I've experienced kindness and time with people who have had questions. Um, they're pressing in to know Jesus. They want a relationship with him. They want to know who he authentically is. And in his kindness, he always lovingly answers questions, doesn't he? Jesus is not too big for your questions, by the way. He doesn't have any problem telling you who he is or showing you, actually. Most of the time he shows, doesn't he? Yeah. I've met with people and experienced some time with folk this week that just want to talk about Jesus. They don't really want to hear anything different but their view of Jesus. I've had some of that. I've had experience in time with those who claim to know Christ and yet they send a very different message to me. I know that I'm probably, I probably err on the side of giving like a hundred, I'm in, I can be intense. I really, I know that surprises you. <laughs> I can be extremely passionate about Jesus. And so when I am aware that I am about my father's business, I am all in. I'm just all in. And sometimes when other people tell me they're all in, but they're not all in, I struggle. Do you struggle? I kind of sit back and go like, but how do I say that, David? Where is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was it. What? Come on. I want to be like Jesus. Do you want to be like Jesus? Then be all in. Be all in. Don't just hang around the border. He loves you. And if you invite the Spirit to inhabit you and bear witness to truth and show you the heart of the Father, I'm telling you, he's taking you. He is not going to hold back any good thing for those who press into him. You can know about Jesus. You can know about the Father. Do you want to know Jesus? And if so, get ready because he's going to take you on a journey because the proof of you really knowing Jesus is in your actions. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we know that your heart is kind. And in kindness... Lord, that does not mean that we agree with everyone. We don't have to. We have to get in agreement and in oneness with your word. And your word has to be translated and interpreted through the power of the loving spirit. So help us to truly do what Jesus says in our passage today. We need to listen and we need to follow because we know his voice. Help us to walk out following the Savior, by leaving works of kindness everywhere we go. Help us, God, to realize that kindness truly is pleasurable to you. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And when we're operating in a spirit of kindness that believes the best of the other person, that shares just for the betterment of another, that we are acting like you. Help us to put on kindness Lord, because kindness is birthed out of humility of knowing that you are God and we are your followers. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Kindness, it's a quality, it's a state of being, and it's only produced by the Spirit. You think that you can be kind without the Spirit of God, and I, I'm going to have to talk to you afterwards. You can't. You'll give them other than Jesus, right? And you got to be honest with that. you got to be honest that there's still some places in you that might need a little redeeming. <laughs> I'm here to testify I still have places that needs Jesus. Amen? But the Word teaches us how to live how to move and how to have our being in Christ Jesus. Amen? And I want to be like Jesus. I want to be kind like my shepherd because then I know I'm just like following along and I'm going to have a greater understanding of who God the Father is because Jesus and the Father are like this. So on your week, I want you to Go about being you because he loves you. And just let that kindness just fill you. When you feel unkind, right, in a moment, because trust me, if you hear a message on kindness, what's going to happen? You're going to get tested. So you go like, no, I'm not going to release what I'm actually thinking. I'm going to put on kindness because Jesus and I are like this, and you go like, Holy Spirit, keep me kind. Amen. And you're going to move forward, and I'm going to tell you something. He's going to keep you kind. He's going to keep you kind. Because if you cry out for the, the Lord's help, he's going to be there. He's always there. So you believe that? Say amen. amen. All right. So kindness, a state of being. And I tell you, that state of being is being like Jesus. Let's do that. Amen. Because anybody can attend a, a Sabbath ser service, right? Anybody can go to church. But that's really proved by how we live the rest of the week. So there's your challenge today.